Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled Springersbury Township Board of Supervisors meeting. Our first item will be a pledge to the flag. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There have been, oh, I'm not turned on, Mark, and you forgot to tell me again. <laughs> there have been no executive sessions since our last meeting, so at this point, I would like to open up the floor to communication from citizens. I would ask that you uh, be recognized and come forward, um, name and address for the record. If we have anyone on Zoom, you can click the raise hand button to be recognized. Would anybody like to address the board? Yes, sir, please. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, Jeff Herman, 3429 Truck Valley Road. Uh, just up here to talk about the Mount Zion Water District and uh, the project out there. I know it's an ongoing thing, um, but I just had a couple of questions just to clarify my understanding of things and um, really about the project and then also about the, the ordinance itself. I know I've got three minutes. If I only get through a couple, that's fine. I'll come back <laughs> later. Um, with regard to the project itself, my understanding in initial conversations with the township is York Water Company did not have to notify the township of the project. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay. So just realize this is actually citizen comment, not cross-examination. So <laughs> yeah, I understand. We want to hear what you have to say. I'm just trying yeah. to, to make sure that I, I fully understand how everything went. And then, um, the, so the township didn't, re the township found out about it in March, I think is what, what I had heard. So um, just making sure that I've got my notes right on, on that stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, so... With regard to that, I found a letter addressed to the Township Board of Supervisors and the Planning Commission from the attorneys of York Water Company sent via certified mail in September of 2023. I think it was September 18th of 2023, notifying the township of the, the project. Um, so I guess my, my last just sort of question as I'm trying to work through this is when we did finally get notification, right, was that because we were within a month of the project wrapping up or was that because York Water Company kind of went, oops, our bad, we had notified them of something that wasn't correct? York Water Company contacted me in August of this year yep. and said, <laughs> oops. we sent a letter saying that it wasn't mandatory. Yeah. And then people within their organization told that person it is mandatory. You better notify the township of this. And that's how <clears throat> we met with, they met with me and I forget the date in August, but it was like the middle of August. I think I looked at the minutes. I think it was August 22nd. It was, you had mentioned in, in the township supervisor. So meeting. Then my, so that my letter to those residents was in early September. Yeah. And the reason for the delay between th those few weeks is they came, they told me they were going to notify me based off of their data who they thought was within 150 feet. Gotcha. Yeah, I assumed you wouldn't have, like you didn't snap your fingers and that, that information automatically came up. So just frustrating for us to know that notification didn't get sent out. I, and I understand where that came from, but I, I mean, I assume the township wasn't under any sort of requirement to notify the people that live, the property owners along Drock Valley Road when they were notified by the York Water Company in September of 2023 that this project was being planned. I don't recall anything from... If we, I, I don't deny we didn't get it, but it's certified, but it slipped through. Yeah. I either got it and didn't 
But you say it was sent it individually to the, each of the Board of Supervisors? It was sent to the Public Utility Commission essentially ordered York Water Company to send notification to Springsbury Township and the Springsbury Township Planning Commission is my recollection from, from what I read. Just so okay, the planning commission so Planning Commission that. is not us. I never received that. Um, they are a recommending body that reports to us. Sure. I the, um, go ahead. So I'm sorry. I, I just personally, I don't recall ever getting a notification from York Water Company about this. Yeah. The the copy of the letter that was entered into um, the Public Utility Commission's li publicly available list does specifically address. It is specifically addressed to the Springsbury Township Board of Supervisors to this address. So um, just wanted to put that out there. And then with regard to the ordinance, just real quick, and I apologize, I'm taking up probably more than three minutes at this point. Um, once we hook into it, we are essentially compelled to remain tied into the line in perpetuity. Is that my understand? That's my understanding, yeah? That's my understanding. And, also, and add to that is you're allowed to have your outside hose bibs remain on your well, but your inside plumbing has to be onto the okay. public water. And so the municipal ordinance, the township ordinance, supersedes state law at that point. Is that correct? Because I believe according to state law, individuals leaving their residence or for any reason, I think is what it states, can notify the utility that we want to discontinue service. So just want to make sure <laughs> I know so that if we hook up and ever need to or want to disconnect from public utility, we don't run afoul of the township itself. When you mean when you say disconnect, I'm not quite sure. So it's uh, chapter 65, section 12 of title 52 of the Pennsylvania Code. It's headline, notice of desire to have service discontinued. A customer who is about to vacate any premises supplied with service by a public utility or who for any reason wishes to have service discontinued shall give at least three days notice to the utility and then it sort of goes so on. I'll defer to our solicitor, but discontinued and disconnected are two, two entirely different things. Uh, they are and, and I'm happy to research the law and, and provide you with what the state law is versus the, the, the local law. But I'd, um, yeah. I'd what, appreciate that. Water utilities are subject to the PUC, which is subject to the state law, but implementation of that is, is a local, um, locally regulated um, service. And, um, you know, I, if you want to send over which sure. part of the state statutes you, you're re referring to, I'm, I'm happy to sure. take a look at it if that's what the supervisors would like me to do. But email, email it to you, sir? Yes. Yes, okay. Yep. All right, I'll yep. take care of that when I get home either sure. tonight or tomorrow. I appreciate it. That's all I have. Thank you, John. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? All right, we'll take, take you first. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Jason Shields, 3534 Druck Valley Road. I was here last time. I'm here for the same reason, Mount Zion Water District. I don't want to mire this meeting, though, and I know it's on the agenda. Last time we were here, it didn't seem that you actually you said that you'd have more information for us. So are we to wait till that information comes out at the end of this so meeting? I'm not sure that we're far enough along. Um, we have had discussions. I say we, the township, not me. Um, there have been discussions with York Water, and I know that they're continuing. So I'm not sure we're in a position to go any further than we did last meeting. So is the board considering an extension to the six month deadline that you put out? I personally wouldn't have a problem with that. I'll leave that up well, to my fellow supervisors to uh, chime in. I'm not sure that that's a fair question at this point in the proceedings. Um, but I do think that 
um, from our point of view, we have a responsibility to keep these residents informed of what's going on, not what we think we might do, but I think it wouldn't hurt to have um, you know regular correspondence with them at least with in, you know that we're you know we've had this meeting with York Water Company, you know what they're doing, what we're doing. Um, but I don't think it's reasonable to for us to speculate about what the outcome is going to be till we get all of the information. I'm not asking you to speculate about the outcome. You just use the word reasonable. It would be reasonable to me that the township wouldn't put a deadline on us when the township doesn't have the full information than they're expecting to have. Well, when so, when you when you ask if we are considering extending the deadline, I, I think that's speculating on the outcome. Okay, I'll ask it a different way. Why would you put a deadline in place when you're not ready to have a discussion? So the discussion is about our relationship with York Water Company. The ordinance is the ordinance. So unless that gets changed, okay. the deadline's the deadline. So, so I, I mean, you can push. The more you push, the harder it's going to be for us to get through to the information that we need to see if there is anything that can be done. So, okay. I mean, I don't know what to tell you at this point other than um, we are undergoing every best effort to work with York Water Company to see what can be done. So we are looking at what the outcomes could be. And as Supervisor Bishop has just stated, we still have time to make that decision if there needs to be a change. Understood, I guess, I guess I'm, then I'm just wondering, with the information you're gathering, what, what, is, what are you trying to accomplish with the information you're gathering? I'm gonna just cut the conversation off. We're having a conversation about a contract that we have with York Water Company. What I can tell you is you, you can hear the tone of the supervisors as to what they're trying to do in terms of resolving or, or, or working through the contract. Um, we're at the whim of York Water to a degree because we're, we're setting up meetings, or a meeting. We're, we've just recently received information. We're, we're reviewing the information and we're pushing forward with it. I can't give you any better answer than that right now, but I will tell you it is top of mind. It is top of our list. The manager and I are working as hard as possible to get a resolution that is acceptable to all sides. But right now we have a contract in place. The ordinance is the ordinance. And, and I, I, th there's not a better answer that the supervisors can provide. And, and I, I'm just asking that the supervisors, I'm suggesting that you stay within those bounds for right now until we have that meeting with York Water. We are pushing, I, I'm, I can guarantee you that. All right, I appreciate that. I guess, you know, we're just wondering what the point of the ordinance is if we don't need the so water. So the point of the ordinance was the agreement was put in place in 1985 and in that agreement, we were required to pass an ordinance, not we, the township was re required to pass, put an ordinance in place to dictate the terms and, and keep the agreement in place until the agreement was completed. That's where it's at right now, so, so that's, just, I I'm got just it. I got you, it. We're, we're having, we're, we're, we're pushing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm, I'm Chris Sanders. I live at 3110 East Market Street. And I was coming tonight about the two well, murders that happened on Eastern Boulevard yesterday. Um, they classified it as a boarding house, and I didn't know if the town, now would they have had to get approval from the township when they classify it as a boarding house? For instance, when I go to Spring, I mean Spring Garden Township, I'm hearing more and more in neighborhoods that there are group homes and which is fine, 
But then when they, I say, well, who owns the group home? It's usually a company. Uh, I, I just didn't know if you as supervisors had certain requirements when um, someone buys a property if they're gonna use it for that type of purpose. Not sure I have an answer for you. And that's fine. I, I just I just wanted to ask that question because we don't live too far from there. And there are times when we will get notification, I think, from our insurance company of perhaps an individual that is living, and I think it was at that address that had some problems, so we needed to be aware of that. That's all. That, but, the only thing I can, I don't know the answer to that directly, and maybe John does, but that use <coughs> has been at that location for a number of years. I don't, I'm not saying that that makes it right. I'm just, it's been, it's not a new use. So I don't know if John or Randall have any. Yeah, better Randall, do you have? Yeah, if I may, I did look at the addresses at, at this corner of, uh, of Eastern Boulevard and, um, and, and Edgewood Road. And if I'm looking at it correctly, the right property, it's zoned neighborhood commercial. There's adjacent properties to it that are zoned R7. The, the neighborhood commercial does allow boarding houses um, as a permitted use. However, there are uh, conditions attached to that because it says see another section that provides more criteria to allow that type of use. If it's an R7 zone, then it is not permitted. So it, it, it sets more characteristics or, or criteria that's under, this, under state legislation as well to have that type of, of, of boarding house. So there is a set of criteria. Now, again, I believe this was in place prior to me even being here, so, and, but our ordinance, uh, as far as the zoning, has not changed in that area of the township for quite some time, I believe, or going back to the, the 2006 adoption of the zoning ordinance. I'm only going to speculate. I, I believe Randall's correct. I think that's been there for more than a decade because uh, I remember one of my guys, Dave Redshaw, had worked uh, around that building and, and then they, they, they changed it to a, a, uh, a boarding house, group home, whatever. Um, and the criteria, just so you know, it's like adequate parking, public water, public sewer. I mean, it's not like fenced in area or any of that kind of thing, but it, it uh, I believe Randall's correct, but it's been for some period of time that that use has been in operation there. Okay, I, I just didn't know. It seems like maybe there's a little bit of a pattern happening where all of a sudden within neighborhoods, companies are buying up homes and they're calling them group homes. So it sounds like if it's in neighborhood commercial, it's it, the use is okay, but if it's in residential, it's not. Correct. That is correct. And, and we have, obviously there's R7 is up against neighborhood commercial and, and the like. We have transitioning zones, so it's not in, it's not, with, you know, it's not gonna be the next door neighbor, but it, it's, it's in that general but it's, zone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because we live right on East Market Street, so there's a lot of, um, you know, businesses, apartments, and things like that, so maybe that's part of the reason. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to? Yes, sir. Scott James, 2625 Hartford Road. This is probably minor compared to what some other people have going on, but uh, I'd like to address the uh, late fee that was assessed to many Spring and Sperry residents on the latest sewer bill. Um, did email Mr. Hodg <coughs> Mr. Hodgkinson, and uh, not really sure that I understand the answers. Um, what I will tell you is that 
I'm, I, are you all aware of the situation where the bills, bills did not get sent to the residents? Um, somehow the post office, from what I'm understanding, somehow the post office failed to deliver the bills to the residents for, I think, I guess it was the July billing period. And um, mine was not paid, much to my surprise. Uh, I got the, when I got my latest bill, it had last, for the prior three months, this three months and a $6 late fee. I'm getting charged a $6 late fee for a bill that was never delivered to me. So in essence, in the legal terms, I never received notice to pay this bill. I understand that it's due every three months. It's due regularly every three months. I think if you would check my, um, check my history, even back to the days where we got postcards as opposed to the letter, over, this is over 20 some years, I can guarantee you I never missed a payment. And now because of the, the township is saying we delivered our bills to the post office, basically another step in this process and the post office failed to deliver the bills to the resident, me, me, myself and the residents. Now that the, the late fee is being passed on to me when I never received notice. All I would ask is that notice is uh, in any kind of proceeding, uh, legal proceeding, any type of proceeding. I, I, sh I have to receive notice to either appear or to do something. And in this particular case, I didn't. And now I'm being, now I'm so, being assessed a penalty for it. Yeah, I think the position that the township has is that everybody knows that their bill is due every, um, you know, every period. And I think that's sufficient. That's, that's, it's not sufficient. I mean, that's, 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 that's how you're gonna treat your constituents for, if you go buy a new car and they say uh, your coupon book will be in the mail, but if you don't make your first payment, even if your coupon book doesn't show up, you're late and you'll pay the late fee. Okay. I think so, that's the way. So if I can ask then, do you have any idea when your next um, uh, garbage bill is due and how much that bill is? Who, me personally? Yeah, you personally. I don't, I don't care any of you. I set it up automatically so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's fine for that you can do that, but some people, I'm sure there's some older residents in the township um, that don't have access to computers, don't have access to internet, so they rely on getting a bill. And I, I, I just, I don't know, I just think it's kind of I think of, with uh, the sewer bill, I had to fill out a form and bring it down to the township to make it automatic. Say that, I'm sorry, say that again? I filled out a form and brought it down to the township to make my sewer payment automatic. Okay. Well, I just think, like I said, I, I just think it's um, for, for a township like Spring and Ferry to be doing that to its residents. I mean, I question, you know, how, how, how legitimate it is to be passing that on. You, you folks seem to be okay with it, but I mean, if that's the case, then it has to be paid. Um, I'll follow up appropriately, but uh, just wanted to address it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I live at 3462 Drift Valley Road. I've been there a while. Um, I have a question. I think maybe you already answered it, but I was at the last meeting and you were asked about the uh, 14 or $1,500 tap-in fee for the sewer. And one of you gentlemen said that none of that money goes to the township. All the money goes to York Water Company. Don't know which one it was, but. So, well, York Water Company sent us a letter said the hooking up was optional, so they're obviously not worried about the money. So it seems abundantly clear that the ones that are enforcing the mandate to connect is the township. So actually, I think we've gone over this multiple times that the person that sent that letter out from the water company was mistaken. It is um, a requirement to hook up and the township does pass that money straight through to the water company to pay for the work that has been going on since 1985, 1986, somewhere in that time frame. Yes. It has been an ongoing project for the water district. So that money goes straight to them to cover the costs to put the water uh, services into the township. Maybe I wasn't here when you said they made a mistake. So they made a mistake in sending out that letter saying it was optional. Is that what you're saying? They did. That is exactly right. Okay. That's all I have.
anyone else, anybody online that uh, would like to address the board? All right, seeing none. Oh, yes, ma'am. Linda Keller, 3449 Druk Valley Road. I think one of the concerns we're uh, thinking about with the 1475 application hookup fee, um, why, if there's a chance, I mean, if we can just pay the 1475, but are we going to be that there's a mandate that we positively still have to hook up even if we have a good well? So you're saying we have to do that no matter what? That's the way the ordinance is written. Okay, just wanted to verify that because if some of the people weren't here, that could be a question they might have. Um, of course, some people can afford it, but some people are going to struggle just to get the 1475. So we are concerned, not just for ourselves, but for other people on Dork Valley Road that will have um, a little bit of a struggle. You know, just people looking out for neighbors. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to address the board? Okay, then we will move on to our engineering reports. Diana? Good evening, gentlemen. My only update is that the grinder pumps are all installed. They've all been started up and tested today. So the only thing remaining on that contract then is um, restoration. Um, if there's any questions about the report, Glad to answer. Any questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. John, civil engineering report. Good evening. Um, probably the only update I, I have uh, for you is about the zoning hearing board. Um, we did have our meeting on Thursday evening last week, and uh, the township's uh, code enforcement people have out, been out actively uh, looking for uh, violations that are pretty obvious. And we, we had a couple of those cases. We had a, a pool that was built without permits and that uh, pool was built in the setback and the zoning hearing board, I believe correctly, uh, denied that that request. Um, there was an RV parked in a in a driveway, pretty obvious place and uh, that, that uh, request was also denied and probably the one you're most interested in is the uh, intermediate school did their presentation a uh, pretty good number of people and we were relatively late into the evening but that has been continued because there's a, uh, a group opposing the application and uh, they haven't even pr uh, presented any of their information to the zoning hearing board so starting uh, November 7th, I think, yeah, November 7th, we will continue the, the East York Middle School, and then there's a couple other applications uh, th that are gonna be on that agenda. That's all the updates I have for you. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Any questions? All right, thanks, John. Thank you. Next, we have our consent agenda, items A through H. Are there anyone that anyone would like to have um, removed for further discussion? I'd like to move for the approval of consent agenda items A through H. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bids, proposals, contracts, and agreements. We have authorization to execute the 2025 agreement with um, uh, Clue Animal. Uh, my screen is cut off here. Hang on one second. I can't get to the agenda. Control services. Animal Control Services. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this is a ongoing annual 
contract with, that we have with Clue Animal Services. It is for the dog control services that occur when the police need assistance with uh, stray dogs or vicious dogs. Uh, there is a minor increase for 2025, but it's minimal and within uh, reason. So I recommend approval. Any discussion? I'll move to execute the 2025 agreement with Klug Animal Control Services. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any communication from supervisors? Gentlemen. I'll make uh, one public service announcement. Uh, York Area United Fire and Rescue, which provides the fire services for our township as well as Spring Garden and Manchester Township is working on a strategic plan that covers the next several years. And of course, fire service is something that directly impacts your tax bill each year from Spring and Spring. So they're undertaking a public survey. They'd like to hear feedback from the public in terms of uh, what you think about the fire services, what should be and shouldn't be thought about. So I encourage you, to, you can go to York Area United Fire and Rescue's Facebook page, or if you want to see me after the meeting, I have cards that have a scan code on here, which will link you right to the survey. It'll take about five minutes to do the survey, but we would like as much public participation in that as possible. Thank you, George. Uh, I, have, I have one, one comment. I, I don't want to open up the whole Druck Valley Ro Road it, sewer or water issue again, but I would like to suggest that the township uh, figure out a way to keep the residents that are interested appraised of at least that things are happening. A schedule. We don't. We don't have to share all the information because we won't have all the information. But it would be nice if there were an easy way through an email or something to let them know that okay, we did in fact have a meeting with uh, York Water, A, and things are happening. For the folks in the room, I'd be glad to have any emails, phone calls. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to communicate in lieu of sending letters in the U.S. mail. Um, once we had a final determination that the board makes, then I was planning on sending a letter to every resident that received my initial letter with the new information on it. But between now and then, I can, if you give me your email, um, I think some of you already emailed me, so we can communicate that way. Clearly, Excellent. clearly, we understand your frustration, and that's why these meetings are taking place. Solicitor's report. No report. We'll have an update at the next meeting. Sounds good. Mark, manager's report. The only thing I'll add is to Mr. Dvoriak's comment is the same cards that Mr. Dvoriak just mentioned about Yao for they're at the back table and then there's a few piles of them on the uh, tables in the lobby as well. And we posted it on our, our website and our Facebook page. So in addition to the Yao for uh, website, that's all. Questions for the manager. Oh, I, I do have one uh, with respect to the camp security park master plan. I, I, I think I saw some that there was a date for public uh, in, input about that, but I'm not sure if that was actually finalized or not. We have a follow up steering committee meeting next Tuesday, and that'll be finalized next Tuesday, but it's 
hopeful that it's the end of October for the public meeting. So that sounds like it's going to be a very short time frame to get that word to the public. Just a concern. I'll bring that up at the meeting on Tuesday. Any other questions or comments for the manager? Um, any items on old business that anyone would like to have a discussion on tonight? Um, I believe next time we have America 250 PA presentation by Brian Tate and Julie Wheeler. The November 20th meeting. November 20th, yes. okay. I wonder if Brian has the wrong date in his mind. Could be. <laughs> Or maybe I misheard I, him. <laughs> if you, if you, I, I have a question about the, uh, the the volunteer fire tax credit uh, information that we got. Uh, we got some very good information from the manager and some recommendations. My question about that is about setting setting limits on those um, tax credits. For volunteers, do we have an option to change that down the road? Is my question. I'm not. Uh, I don't need an answer right now. Maybe complex, but uh, I personally would be in favor for maximizing the credits to these volunteers who provide a very important service to the township. But I also want to make sure that if we maximize that at this point, that we're not um, locked into something that we can't change down the road if the program doesn't turn out to work the way we thought it was going to or anything like that. So I'd just like to know the answer to that question before we move forward with that. Uh, Mr. Bishop, yes, we can certainly, so, so the way the ordinance is written is um, you can update the criteria via resolution every year and as it relates to the monetary amounts um, we can I, we can go look at it and possibly pull it out and put it in or, or say that that amount can be set by resolution every year so that way the ordinance stays in place and then you can just refresh it by amendment um, uh, with a resolution versus having to do a full ordinance amendment which is a more lengthy process and you would do that at your annual um at the january meeting with the rest of the ordinances that you would set for the year sounds like a good solution yeah yeah no absolutely and and, and other um other townships that's the way that they they handle that as well okay thank you yep And the last item on here is the Mount Zion Drug Valley Road Water District. Anything else that we need to cover? Is that right, Reed? I, I don't think so. What we're doing is trying to establish a date because, I mean, Mark and I are probably the easier of the two to, to, to set a time to meet, uh, but it's a publicly traded company, and we're trying to meet with three or four of their senior leadership and uh, nailing all or four of them down to a date. I think we have one on the calendar and, and possibly would have some level of an update. I, I, I don't want to promise it for next meeting, but the date that we're meeting with them is right around that time frame uh, that that meeting would take place. But I don't know if we would have a resolution for you other than an informational, potential informational update at that time. So. Okay. Then I believe that takes us to the end of our business this evening, so meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.